Since it is almost time to celebrate New Year's Eve, you probably already started stocking up your lighter supply in order to ignite all your fireworks. But if you are tired of the disadvantages of a classical lighter, then you can always get yourself an arc lighter. If we look closely, we can see that it basically consists of two electrodes with a distance of 5mm that possess a high voltage difference of around 15,000 volts and thus create an electric arc, or easier put a current path through the air that consists of plasma, which can reach very high temperatures and thus can easily ignite our firework. But after taking this arc lighter apart, it was easy to figure out that the manufacturer does not want to share its circuit secrets with us. Now the only circuit that I have laying around and can reach high voltages of around 2300 volts is a CCFL inverter, aka a cold cathode fluorescent lamp inverter. Like the name implies, it is used to power cold cathode fluorescent lamps, but we can also create an electric arc with it by bringing the output wires awfully close together and then pulling them apart. But in order to create an arc without almost shorting the output wires, we would need around 3000 volts for 1mm distance between the electrodes. So the question is, can we modify the circuit to achieve that? Let's find out. Since the circuit only consists of a handful of components, I followed the PCB traces in order to create a rough schematic of the circuit. The only mystery here were the windings of the utilized transformer. So I had no choice but to remove it carefully from the circuit and remove its protective tape. On the inside, we can see a secondary coil with a lot of windings and two primary coils with fewer windings. After removing two solder joints and slowly unwinding the wires, I realized that the transformer uses a center tap primary coil which consists of 14 turns each. The last remaining inconspicuous primary coil is a feedback coil that only consists of around 4 turns. And now that we successfully identified the circuits as a so-called Rory converter, how does it actually work? Well, let's say transistor 1 conducts first, which means that the current through one half of the primary coil will increase. This creates an increasing magnetic flux, which thus induces a voltage into the secondary and also in the feedback coil, which therefore hinders the second transistor to become conductive. Once the current maximum is reached, the induced voltages become lower and thus the second transistor turns on and repeats the same procedure just in reverse. And since there is also a capacitor attached in parallel to the primary coil, the created oscillation through the primary is sinusoidal, with a frequency determined by the resonant circuits, in this case around 37.5 kHz. While all that sounds rather complicated, the output voltage of the transformer is still mainly determined by the turns ratio. At an input voltage of 12V DC, the oscillator creates a sine wave with a voltage of 27V RMS at the primary, which should create a 2300V nominal voltage on the secondary. That means we need around 4 windings on the primary to get around 15000 on the secondary. For first tests, I use 0.85mm enamel copper wire to create the 4 turns and took it up directly to the output of my square wave inverter circuit from my wireless energy project. After soldering two wires to the secondary coil of the transformer, adjusting the distance to 5mm to one another and cranking up the input voltage to 6 volts, the electric arc was established, which means our transformer theory was correct. So I went ahead and created a new center tap primary coil with the reduced amount of turns in order to replicate the voltage boost we experienced a second ago. Afterwards I double checked whether the pin connections were the same as before, soldered in the transformer, removed the capacitors on the secondary coil since they are not suited for such a high voltage, added two output wires, adjusted the distance to one another and finally started rising the input voltage. At a level of 12 volts, the electric arc was established, which could also easily ignite fireworks. And if we check the voltage on the primary coil, we can still see the beautiful sine wave, 
just with a higher frequency because of the lower inductance. But needless to say, this circuit is only prototype and not really a proper arc lighter yet. So stay tuned for an upcoming project video, in which I will build one. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.